Welcome to Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. This is our weekly program featuring everything that is coming up in the area's music, arts, and entertainment scene. We will interview local artists, authors, musicians, and even some nationally recognized names who may be performing here in our area. We will have movie reviews and film suggestions from the real dad, Mark Schumann, and etiquette tips from Catherine Michaels. This is your all-access pass, and here are your hosts. Arts and Leisure editor Sally Sanders and our entertainment reporter Steve Coulter. Welcome to Arts and Leisure on the HN Network. I'm your host Steve Coulter. I'm joined here on the couch by our real dad Mark Schumann. Welcome back. It's hey, been, you know it's, it's been it, almost it, the whole season. It's it's we've... amazing when you look out the window and the the trees have leaves and yeah. and we still are waiting for good movies. Last time I'm we were kidding. talking about Tribeca Film Festival, now we're talking summer blockbusters. It's, yeah, so and it's, Tribeca it's a whole came new and went and, film. and and although some of the movies that played Tribeca are starting to are be released, now. which is great. We got the Meddler with Susan. The Sorrell. Meddler is it will we'll get to. Yeah. The whole counter-programming thing that's happening, but the Meddler is a is a lovely little film. It's it's great. It's, and you got to see it at Tribeca? No, I, I just saw it last week. I just saw it last week. It's, it's Bethel here Cinema in the area. Or, yeah. yeah, Bethel. See, there are plenty of venues. There, there beyond are. the big multiplexes there that you can go to. And this is the best time of year to find the little films. Oh yeah, because so many big films get so much attention. As you all talked about last week, we just can't yeah, wait we, for... Yeah, we did a whole for, huge segment on Captain we America can't, we last get, week. You know, I, I'm so sorry I wasn't here. And and it, all these big films take up so much bandwidth, and yet there are so many smaller films that are available at smaller theaters. Some are going direct to on-demand. Some are playing on HBO to begin with. We'll get to that in our second and, and segment. It's, and it's actually a great time for people who love movies to search out and find some movies that otherwise could get lost. And and in some other years might have been held until later in the year for release. Right. It's kind of a change of scenery where the, you see movies like uh, last year was Love and Mercy, the mm -hmm. Brian Wilson mm -hmm. biopic that came out in the summertime. These are kind of artistic films that are coming out, right. usually not the time period that they used to come out in, but you're seeing them be released. Last week we talked about The Lobster, which premiered at New York Film Festival, which was Colin which was just too weird, and now it will be interesting to see how yeah. it plays. And you have Maggie's in a, in a plan broader, that also came out with Greta Gerwig. Uh, Maggie's plan is a delight, and you got to film. see that. At I New did York in New York, and it's just a delightful film, and it's one that, again, it's not a film for the entire family. It it features a very confused but lovely young woman who wants a family and puts together a plan to get a family enter a very conveniently located college professor who helps Ethan with Hawk. that plan. Ethan Hawke is most of those Ethan Hawke fans out there. He's in this one. And then he happens to be married to a Julianne, Julianne Moore sporting <laughs> the most bizarre faux Danish accent you're going to ever oh, hear no. in the movies. And she's just a riot. And then skip ahead a few years and all of a sudden Maggie says, maybe my plan didn't make any sense after all. And how do I undo it? And that's when the movie fun begins. Well, you see in a lot of our plans in life, sometimes don't, they don't work out. And, and maybe the moral of the story is that we shouldn't have plans. Yes. That we should simply let life happen. Now but that's it's, truly higher learning right it there. Is, it is. <laughs> and, but, it, but it's a lovely film. And it's, it's a very New York film. And it's a film that makes us think and makes us laugh. And it's just the right anecdote if the rest of the family wants to go see something with a new numeral behind it. And uh, another one that's kind of a, fa a comedy drama is A Bigger Splash with Ray Fiennes and right. Tilda Swinton, who right. already were in a movie earlier this year, uh, Hail Caesar, that we did a whole segment on. Bigger Splash is set in Spain, is that it's, right? It, it, um, it's, um, it's, it's I, I can't remember. I think it is. I think it is. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. released last weekend, yeah. so that's another alternative. And Tilda Swinton, who has had this most interesting career, since before and, and when she won the Oscar for Michael Clayton, just continues to come out of a different box every time. And she's, she's just a fascinating She's playing a rock star in this movie. She is. She is. Yeah. I can't wait to see I that. I can't one. wait to see that, I think that it's too. playing at Bethel Cinema this weekend. I, I think it, yeah. It's yeah. just opening this weekend. Yeah, it should be. And also one. at Bethel, again, is, is the meddler. And I'd love to... I, the, the meddler, for any of us who loves Susan Sarandon... She's back. She's back. And, and who have said... You know, every time Meryl Streep plays a part, you realize that 
the runner-up for that part was probably Susan Sarandon. And she's such a lovely actress. And this is a part that gives her the chance to be at her most Susan Sarandon, to remind us why we like her so much, and to let us know that at about 70 years old, this woman Isn't still it has what it she's takes. Seven years old? Still has what it takes to command oh, yeah. a film. This is a lovely little film about the relationship between a mother and a daughter. We have seen many movies over the years about the relationships between mothers and daughters, whether we go back to Terms of Endearment or Steel Magnolias. We talked about these two weeks ago, uh, Sally and I. But, but this film just captures the, the dynamics of what happens when the parent, well-intentioned as she may be, gets a little too close to the daughter, a little, a little too intrusive, starts to call a few too many times, texts a few too many times, and how does the child handle it when the child really does need the guidance from the parent? It, it's just lovely and it makes you smile. And we're lucky to be in the part of the world that where so many movies refer to. And so this is a lady from New Jersey who moves to California, but it's filled with a little fish northeast out of water. Yeah, humor. northeast first west. She comes back to the to New Jersey and, and we feel like we're home. So you can't forget your roots. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, just a lovely film. And Are there any other ones on your plate of the alternative blockbusters, or should we jump right into Alice in Wonderland? Because well, I know you're excited I'm for excited Tim Burton's There's second part. Coming out this weekend, I believe, Next is weekend. Love and Companionship. Oh, okay. Love yep. and Companionship. And it'll be interesting to see. The trailer looks very promising. It's based on an early novel by Jane Austen. Right. And so for any of us who loved Sense and Sensibility or Pride and Prejudice... Our favorite author who always uses and in the title gives us this, this new look at the, at the dynamics of, of scheming people in Britain when they wore heavy costumes. They're all, those films are always fun. I'm talking about costumes. The Alice in Wonderland looks outrageous. Yeah, the, the, the first reboot of Alice in Wonderland a few years ago from critics kind of got a... Oh, it got uh, panned. It got panned. And it, it kind of said, you know, Tim so why Burton. are you excited about it this time? I loved the first one. Oh, I thought okay. the first one was really fun. For all the reasons that most people didn't like it, I liked it. It was Tim Burton at his most outrageous. <laughs> it was Johnny Depp at his most outlandish. I and can't even it, imagine And that. then it had Helena Bonham Carter just doing her bit. And it was great fun. It was great fun. Now, it felt like a complete movie, so I can't quite figure out what is going to happen in this movie that justifies a return visit, but who cares? Well, that's what you often see with who these cares? blockbusters. You see them, we were just talking about before the show, Jason Bourne is going to be back for a fifth installment. Yeah, but you Jason see Bourne. In Independence Day as a second installment. Independence Day doesn't need to happen. We already saved the world. But, and, uh, but, but, but th this Alice in Wonderland thing, I think it'll be interesting because for those of us who, who grew up read with the book the and, and, and right. all this, there are perhaps other stories to tell, and so it'll be interesting. It was a slightly different look at the Alice story a few years ago, and I'm looking forward to it. Because Tim Burton, even when his movies don't work, read Planet of the Apes, he <laughs> is never a dull filmmaker. Visually, his movies are always interesting, right. even if they don't make any sense. And now, I did get to see Money Monster last weekend, and that was kind of some dull filmmaking from Jodie Foster. Let's pivot yeah. a little bit, because that's yeah. an original movie, and that's actually which is a, kind of a blockbuster. And it, and it actually played at Cannes, which is right. kind of an interesting place for it to play. Yeah, it debuted at Cannes, and it yeah. played uh, last week it opened up. Yeah, I, I, I haven't seen it. I, I, I kind of hesitate. I, you know, I know that you know George Clooney... I thought it was a good movie, but overall the filmmaking itself was was rather yeah. bland. She didn't it, take any real chances with it, especially it, at the it, end. It feels it, it feels like a very safe. Yes, safe, safe is the best. Safe, way to, safe. It feels safe, yep. and and sometimes at the movies we we want to see the the movie makers stretch a bit, and and we want to see the boundaries stretch a little right. bit. There is uh, there there are a couple of things that have. De debuted at Khan that I think are going to be Yeah, let's be talk about Khan before yeah. we head off to our second segment. Uh, there's a lot of buzz around this Steven Spielberg film. The and BFG. The BFG. And With the Academy uh, Award winner Mark Rylance. Uh, uh, they team once again. Yeah. And, and what's interesting about this is that every, so once, every once in a while Spielberg reminds us that he can be as daring a movie maker as anyone else. And apparently this is a very daring 
film visually and in its content and it, it, it harkens back to the Steven Spielberg who brought us E.T. It's, it's his childlike imagination again. And now he's not the only major filmmaker at Cannes. Uh, we had a huge one from Woody Allen, Cafe Society, yeah. which I think will be playing up for the Oscar. And have you seen the, the trailer? I mean, it's an interesting, yeah. it's an interesting trailer. There's, there's it, Woody. He loves yeah, his girls. And, <laughs> you know, here's Woody and however old he is. What's interesting about his films is his films either really get hit out of the park or they shouldn't even have been, they should have been hidden. What, what, is, what you look at when you look at the, the, the previews of this particular film is it has such a visual style. Yeah. And I always get very encouraged when he has taken the time to make the visual you say, approach. You can see that he's trying in this you one really can. versus the one with Joaquin Phoenix and oh. the stone was... Oh. He kind of just mailed that one in. It was like it was shot on an iPhone. I mean, this one, this one. <laughs> that was your favorite movie from last year. Wasn't yeah, it? no, no. <laughs> but you go back to how good the Midnight in Paris looked. Oh, I and love how, Midnight in Paris. How good Bullets Over Broadway looked, and and he, when he gets into a, a, a visual sense, there are a few better. And it looks it looks wonderful. And and again, I think it's interesting. He's played Khan before, but it's interesting anytime he chooses to take a film to that very visual stage. And one more that you were interested in is Julieta. That's yes, a well I think Al Almodovar is just such a wonderful movie maker. Right, and that one could win the whole, the, the grand and, prize, the Palme d'Or. And, and, and you go back to, you know, this is a man who's given us so many thoughtful, interesting, creative films. And any time that there's one of his that, that gets this kind of found it, it's kind of showcase, you have to take it seriously. When it comes out, are you going to see The Neon Demon with Al Fanning? Uh, probably. Yeah. I don't know if that's Do you like that director, the guy from Drive? You know, I, I liked intense. Drive. I liked Drive. I thought Drive was, was pretty Talk intense. About a trailer, by but the this way. One, this, but this, this one, one looks a little trailer. bit odd. You right. know, it looks a little bit odd. I think what, what, what's What's interesting what's happening... And for those who haven't seen it, it's like a black swan type movie within the beauty industry. So there's a lot of competitiveness, a and, lot of jealousy. And apparently it's pretty brutal. Yeah. Uh, what's interesting in, in, in what's happening in film, and I think that it's, it's healthy, in that the film industry itself is getting so much competition from inside the industry because viewing habits have changed so much. Why do we have to go to the movies when we can stream anything we want, including a lot of original programming? We have more little films that are choosing to be released simultaneously or first on some kind of streaming service that are credible films. And so all of a sudden, those people who make the traditional film that plays in a theater where we buy popcorn have competition from many more, more places. And so it forces them those that make serious films to make more daring films. And then unfortunately, it, it encourages people who make big films to make bigger films that don't always make a lot of sense. It's, it's interesting. And it is interesting. It I'm is. I'm going to use this as a transition to go into our first commercial break. Okay. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about movies that you can watch on your couch, on That's demand, right. this weekend. And not always on the phone. That's a little bit of a small screen. All right. And we'll be right back after this commercial break. Walter Stewart's Market in New Canaan is your time-saving local shopping destination for the best of spring. Find many of your favorite products, from great specials on everyday items to the freshest organic produce, artisanal cheeses, and grass-fed steaks. Chop off your knives to be sharpened. Grab a beautiful bouquet of spring flowers and stop in next door for a wine tasting. Plus, their personable staff is always ready to lend a helping hand. So stop in to Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, today, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. Connecticut is coming back to hometown banking, to a partner that makes small businesses feel big, where community comes first, where you get the know-how only neighbors can deliver, where saving time is important too. It's time to expect more. It's time to bank well. Bank smart. Bank local. Bank well. With the 24-month Bankwell Smart CD, you can earn one and a quarter percent APY and raise your rate and add to your CD.
Mosquitoes, ticks, gone. Guaranteed. That's what Mosquito Squad guarantees as America's most trusted mosquito and tick control company. Locally owned and operated, over 90,000 homes have been protected by Mosquito Squad using their dual protection method for season-long protection, which includes barrier spray service for eliminating mosquitoes and adult ticks, as well as supplemental programs to increase tick control. They use only USDA organic options, which are safe and non-toxic. Contact them today at www.squadctny.com or 203-893-4309. Mosquito Squad. No bugs, no bites, no kidding. You are watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. Nearly half a million viewers enjoyed our broadcasts in the first five months. Advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Jessica Murren, Advertising Director, at 203 203- 273-7312 or email jessica at han.network Welcome back to Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. As promised, we're going to go over some movies that you can watch on your couch. This weekend is a, one in particular, 8 p.m. HBO, Saturday night. Right. Brian Cranston's All the Way, the biopic about Lyndon B. Johnson as he works with Martin Luther King to pass the Civil Rights Act. This one's going to be one for the ages, I think. It's uh, one of each. I, I, can, I can feel that HBO is going to nail this one because they really need a hit right now, and I think they're going to nail it. Well, the play from which the and film the is awesome, made yeah. was a fabulous play. Brian Cranston won the Tony. It is a very precise, detailed look at what it took for this piece of legislation to be passed. It was interesting to see the play near the time that Selma the film came out and it was a very different interpretation. This is all about Johnson as the ultimate behind the scenes wheeler dealer who has such a strong moral compass, such a fervent belief in what is right and how people should treat each other. And he's willing to do every kind of deed on every, earth, every sort of back door, every kind of back yeah. back the back door thing to make the front door the right the right thing. I truly think he's one of our more underrated presidents. He, he's he's it's interesting. I, I, I'm you know kind of a political uh, junkie, and I just uh, a couple of weeks ago you can find online the making of the president series from the 60s and 60, 64, and 68, and it's fascinating to see how he changed oh, yeah. from 64 when he was on top of the world, the period that all the way captures, and then, and then the defeated the man to, in 1968. Yeah, Vietnam. But this, it'll be interesting to see what HBO does, because the material in all the way on stage was so rich. It was also a long show. It was almost three hours long. So it'll be interesting to see what they have found it necessary to trim. But it, it really is the movie event of the weekend. And we shouldn't be deterred that it's on television, or as HBO tells us, it's not television. Well, don't tell Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe that. They've got the other guys coming out this weekend. Well, and, <laughs> and, and it probably has a lot of potential. But you but, could save your money and watch HBO but, on Saturday but, night. But, but it's interesting that, the, again, back to this melding of, of, of how we see entertainment, it, it doesn't make it any less of a film event, the fact that it's a film event at home. And that's, that's a big change. That's a big change. As, as, as people invest more in how they watch at home, as the quality improves, we're going to see more and more of this migration to the choice to watch at home. And, and this is a case of where uh, HBO, Netflix, Showtime, they teach us that what matters is the entertainment, not necessarily where, which chair we sit in. We can make our own popcorn. Right. And the, a lot of the characters in this movie in particular are characters from history that we're very familiar with. We've seen J. Edgar Hoover. We've seen right. a biopic on him. We've seen a biopic on Lady Bird Johnson, who's going to be played in this um, by Melissa Leo, Academy Award winner. Yeah. You've got Anthony Mackie's playing Martin Luther King. We just saw him two years ago. And, and, and the Martin Luther so King portrayal in, 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 in this story is quite interesting. And it, it, it's very much a balanced portrayal as opposed to, and the details of their relationship, much more so than, than the, the film Selma did, which was a little bit caricatured of, of LBJ. Now, we keep talking about this over and over again with biopics. This is concentrated on the year 1964. Right. It's, it's just the Very much in the, the same Civil vein as, as Lincoln, which Lincoln right. takes place over a course of, I think, a month, right. if not even that long of time frame. Selma, same thing. 13 Days, we were just talking about oh, earlier. I love that film. Great. 
great movie. Love that film. Short spans, that's kind of the way to go yeah. with these biopics rather than the whole comprehensive outlook like a Gandhi or um, I'm thinking of another one like Ray or, you know. But I th I, what, what they do is they give us the luxury of exploring a moment in time. And, and this just takes you back to a period that was certainly well before you were born but your parents would remember and those of us who remember that period even though we were oh so young uh, it was a time of real turbulence in this country it was a time where where there was such tension between people and the great thing about revisiting those eras of the past is they help us ask questions about how much we've actually progressed the, the, the frightening thing I remember after seeing all the way on stage was how far we haven't progressed and how we're having too many of the same arguments today so the timing about feel, what separates people. You feel oh, like the timing couldn't be more is, perfect. Yeah, right. Couldn't be more perfect when we're entering an election and, and we're, we're looking at th those things that reflect who we are as people and as a nation. Now, do you feel like the filmmaker in this case, Jay Roach, who just teamed up with uh, Brian Cranston last year and did Trumbo, do you feel like they wanted to do HBO so it's not in theaters? Because there, there's been a lot of biopics, particularly set in this era of time, between Bobby and Selma, that they, you think they wanted to get away from being in the theater and, and on the couch, as you were talking about earlier. What, what I have heard, and I again, just from an observation perspective, is that those people who, who work for HBO love the freedom that HBO as a sponsoring organization offers and they have a different kind of commercial pressure. HBO's commercial pressure, while real, is much more of a long view than what the grosses happen to be on the opening weekend. Right. And so a thoughtful picture like this, an, an intellectual picture, if you will, like this, probably has a better chance surviving when the commercial pressure to compete against Independence Day 12 isn't what drives the creative decisions. So they can perhaps make the film longer. They can let it be very talky. This is a, as a play, it was a very talky play, and you can't shortchange that. Aliens in this movie? I don't think so. You, 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 you can't do what they did when they made the film of August Osage County uh, yes. a couple of years ago. That was Roberts a Pulitzer Prize-winning three-hour play mm -hmm. that became a confused two-hour movie because you can't take an hour out of a three-hour movie, three-hour play, and not feel it. Right. And so hopefully this this has stayed as much intact as, as it can. But it's great. It's great. Great show. Besides All the Way, I think you have some other recommendations for people that are looking to save money and not hit the big theaters. Well, and even if, even if they just happen to miss some things. For those people who, who are still getting over the end of Downton Abbey. Maggie Smith is back on Maggie on Smith, and, and who haven't ever had the chance, perhaps, to see Maggie Smith carry a film. In the right. same way we were talking earlier about this, the of magic Lady of in the van. Susan, Susan Sarandon in the carrying a film. Maggie Smith in Lady in the Van, she is the movie. In fact, when she's not in the movie, you, you get tempted to fast forward until she comes back into the movie because she's just delightful. Is this woman who, for reasons we don't learn until the end of the film, chooses to live many years of her life in a van that she parks in the street and in the driveway of this very nice neighborhood in London. And she's not the only veteran actor that has a movie on on demand. Christopher Plummer has one, Gr Remember. Remember, which is, which is supposed to be, haven't seen it, a very taut thriller about the Nazis. And, and, and any chance to see Christopher Plummer work is, is, I agree. is worth you it. You have to and see it. Worth it. And then one final one, Jake Gyllenhaal stars in Demolition. That one was supposed to come out in the fall, came out earlier this year, now is on demand for people to watch. And, and it, I've heard mixed things about it, but again, when the investment of time is in the comfort of your home, and you it's can... It's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to be... Than going for to, $12, and then you have right, to pay for the popcorn right. and the soda. And it's yeah. a lot easier just to try and see how a film works. Exactly. And, uh, so it's good. It's good. Mark, thank you as always thank for joining you. here on the this couch. We're going to be joined with, by Kelly Targowski of the Trumbull uh, High School Marching Band next after the commercial break. 
had a sports injury or a slip and fall that needs immediate care, Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast without an appointment. Biking, golf, tennis, soccer, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care open Monday through Saturday in the I Park building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com. That's CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Like them on Facebook. I think what makes ONS special is that it has everything that makes academic medicine great. We have the fellowship trained specialists, but we still bring the style and type of medicine that's indicative of a community practice. We are all trained in our area of interest and expertise, so our patients see a doctor who specializes in their particular injury. I did have two consults with major New York City hospitals, but I just felt that the care was best here. I was treated like a rock star. The surgery exceeded any expectations that I had. For over 25 years, Mike Sizzik Painting and Wallpapering has been the name to know for residential and commercial properties in Fairfield County. He uses only the top brands, including Benjamin Moore, for impeccable preparation and lasting quality. Call Mike now and receive $500 off any job over $7,000. Mike is currently accepting reservations for spring, so call him today at 203-770-8869 or 203 203- 972-3310. For your custom painting, finishing, and staining needs, it's Mike Sizik. For more than 50 years, Triple S has been Fairfield County's expert service for carpet, upholstery, and drapery cleaning. We provide the best in repairs and in-depth restoration, understanding fabrics and how to properly clean and restore them. Our staff will come to your home to clean your wall-to-wall carpet to perfection. We can also pick up your fine carpets and bring them to our facilities. With locations in Norwalk, Stamford, and Stratford, Triple S will get the job done fast, big or small. At Triple S, you can count on our people as well as our cleaning. Find us at triplesclean.com or 203-847-8000. I'm Denise DiGregoli, the host of The Drive on the HAN Network. Join me Tuesdays for some motivational, intelligent talk with a little humor as we visit with people who live their lives mindfully. Tune in to The Drive live on Tuesdays, 1230, here on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski. Join us for Coffee Break weekdays at 11 to get the latest Connecticut news, weather, high school sports, and more. News doesn't get any more local than on Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Welcome back to Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. I'm joined on the couch with Kelly Targowski, Trumbull High School Marching Band. There's a benefit concert going on at the high school this Saturday at 7.30. Uh, the high school is located 72 Strobel Road. Tickets are fifteen dollars. You got a couple local bands, Funky Dogs and Forget of Paris. Is that Forget right? Forget Paris, right? Yeah. So yeah, a couple of local bands lined up for a benefit concert. We actually have our our own jazz band. And so they're students, opening, right? They're opening. So our own uh, Trumbull High School. Uh, jazz band will be opening for the concert and then uh, the Funky Dogs is a brass band actually. Primarily they are um, uh, you know New Orleans style type jazz. Um, they have a couple of former members of the high school band, high school which is how, band, yeah, right. which is why we've had that connection. Uh, they reside out of UConn, but they travel all up and down the East Coast. They actually were just down in um, New Orleans for a jazz festival. Oh, cool! So uh, they're highly sought after and have a really big following. So we're thrilled to have them performing. And then the other band that's performing is more of a rock band. It's a four-member rock band. Forget Paris. Um, the ties locally in Trumbull is one of the members, actually the lead singer and guitar player, is Tashua, uh, right? yeah, Tashua Music um, uh, Director. So we're thrilled that they're contributing their time and coming out really to support a good cause uh, as we're raising lots of funds for upcoming events with the marching band. And that good cause is that the marching band is heading to not only the Fiesta Bowl Parade at the end of the year, but also they're doing the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in 2017 in November. So there's two huge events for right. the marching band coming up yeah. uh, this year and next year. So obviously so honored and privileged to be to be selected, uh, particularly not that the Fiesta Bowl is, is anything small and uh, we're thrilled to be a part of that this December, but uh, next year it'll be actually be fall of next year. Right. So um, November 2017, the, yeah, for those who are keeping um, score at home. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, you can watch this year too, but it's uh, we're only one of ten bands selected nationally. Right. So thrilled to have that honor. Um, obviously there's a lot of of funds that need to be collected in order to get to these events, um, a band of 150 members plus all the equipment 
um, and all the props that go along with uh, putting on a, a show of this quality. Uh, we will be um, hosting several several events coming up, and the first one's this Saturday at the high school. It's going to be a busy summer. It is going to be a busy <laughs> summer. Actually, the kids have actually started practice already. I am amazed always their at their work ethic commitment is level. Incredible. It really is. So for the fall marching season, spring uh, spring practices have already started. They were there this past Tuesday. Uh, they'll be there tonight, and then uh, as you drive by the high school, they're for the most, most of the dedicated summer, program at the yeah, high school. Yeah, they they work really hard. So I'm thrilled that they have the opportunity to perform on a stage that's a, such as this. Uh, I also love the opportunity like at the concert this Saturday that they get to see you know they'll participate in this too because Absolutely. they'll go as, as uh, members and then obviously the jazz band playing so it's a fun event for the kids to participate in too. Yeah and you helped organize there was a huge celebration at the end of April with yeah. the Macy's officials in Trumbull. You helped organize that. What was the kids reaction to that? Yeah. The surprise on their face? What was that? I know. So it was like? really a secret. Macy's, one of their requirements is um, once you're selected, they, they keep it a hush-hush event and they want to try to uh, present it to the kids and in this case our band director Mr. Horton uh, really wanted it to be at an event where the parents can participate because as much as as hard as hard working as the kids are we have a parent uh, oh, family yeah. that's just as hard working and dedicated so he wanted it to be in an event that the that most of the parents would be at as well so Macy's came out at our annual band uh, banquet which we have at the end of every season similar to sports sports banquets and um, and they announced and the kids were totally surprised they had no idea uh, and Macy's really did it right so we're we're thrilled and looking forward to them yeah and i know reporting on that story the kids reactions were like this was the coolest moment of high school by know, far and it's just I like know. that's something they'll always remember it will be and, and and now preparing for it because even incoming freshmen this year as well as next year it's just going to really build the program right. even bigger than it is yeah now. it gets even more people to mm -hmm. participate now you heard about macy's first and then you heard about yeah. the Fiesta Bowl a couple of days later. I know. How did you, did you apply to both at the same time or how did that work exactly? Yeah, you do. So there's a pretty long lead time for most of these parade applications and, um, you know, we, we apply to those in, in hopes of getting selected. Um, and then you try to figure out how you're going to pay for it after the fact, I guess. But um, in this case, there is at least a little bit of separation. It would have been even harder had it been this, oh, yeah. this Thanksgiving, it was and Thanksgiving, then Thanksgiving and then right after. It's on yeah. New Year's, basically. Right. Yeah. So we have a little bit of time in between. Plus, it gets um, an opportunity for a different group of, of students to participate. It's not all the same class. Right. Uh, I actually felt, you know, um, at the band banquet when they made the Macy's announcement, a lot of our juniors and seniors were there, obviously, and they won't be participating in the parade. Was there a little so, bit like, ah? Oh. Yeah, you know, they were, they were very gracious, and our, our principal, uh, Mr. Gorino, stood up and, and reminded the underclassmen that they uh, were going to be able to participate on this national stage primarily because of the upperclassmen. Yeah. So, um, and they're very gratitude, gracious. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. The it's tradition hard continues. Work. Right. Yeah. And now the Fiesta Bowl, the band has been there before, is that they correct? They have. Okay. They went uh, last time in 2009, I believe, 2010. But this one's even um, cooler because the National Football Playoff yeah. will be in uh, Glendale, Arizona. Right. So there's going to be a lot of people there this year. December 31st, 2016, right. when yeah. they're performing. Yeah, and they, they uh, you know, for the fall marching band season, that t traditionally ends around uh, the second week of November, but it will be extended this year. So it's kind of a double-edged sword because the kids that go through the marching band program uh, look forward to be over because yeah, they be start exhausted. practicing now. But they'll extend that out actually yeah. further now because they'll have to prep for that parade. And they're there um, in their Halloween costumes yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the fall. Yeah. So the fall we usually get a, we usually have about 150 to 160 total members uh, between musicians and color guard. Um, and uh, like I said, they start preparing now. They'll go out through the whole summer, including a two-week period in uh, band uh, in uh, August uh, band camp. They uh, they uh, go from nine to nine every day for two weeks. In oh the, my gosh! In the heat of the summer, I can't even imagine um, before they even put on their first show. So. And the end of the summer also includes the mattress sale fundraiser. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah, we had that last year. We might skip it this okay. year. The other, I'll, I'll just mention this one real quick too, because after um, the this Saturday, we're going to start promoting our next fundraising event. Uh, which Marissa's has graciously, graciously extended an opportunity for us to do a comedy night. So again, kind of looking for a local community opportunity to have someone that want to come out for a fun night. And it includes dinner. It has four comedians that are coming up from New York. Oh, awesome! Um, uh, performing, and that's going to be June twenty first, I believe, is the date. So you'll hear about so that. So the one events soon. will keep coming. Maybe in. they'll have to come back. Yeah. Right, and for <laughs> tickets, it's just a THS. 
GMB. C-O-R-P.com. <laughs> so if you don't want to buy tickets <laughs> online, you can pay at the door this Saturday night at 7.30. Uh, the, the, we do have a maximum at one point, so tickets are available online. You can find us, if you just Google Trumbull High School Golden Eagle Marching Band, uh, you'll find the website yeah, right and there tickets are Google. available. Yeah. Awesome. Kelly, thank you so much for no, coming you back for onto the couch yeah, and talking anytime. about all the success the band's been having. I'll we're, be back. we're cheering them on. It's <laughs> awesome. And uh, thank you again. And that concludes our show today. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to be on IATIS next week, and we'll be back on May or June 2nd. Have a great weekend, everybody.